My name is Cammie, and this is Classics and Cats. Okay, so if you're new here, I don't normally sound like this. Um, I have a cold. But we're going to try to get through this anyway, because I need to get on the ball and film. So I have some echinacea tea. I always try to drink echinacea tea when, when I'm not feeling well. And this has Manuka honey in it too, so I'm going to hope it does, does a miracle. It's really hot. Also, since I'm doing a book haul, I might as well share my book mug haul. I bought this from um, Rifle Paper Company, which if you're not familiar, um, so I fell in love with Rifle Paper Company because the creator, Anna Bond, did the Puffin and Bloom editions. Uh, she designed the cover art and the end papers. Mm. So um, I fell in love with these editions and learned about Anna Bond and that she has her own uh, website. She does stationery, she does home items, you know, art prints, pillows, rugs, all kinds of beautiful prints, um, flower prints. Um, so I absolutely love her. Well, she had um, some mugs released this year and one of them was their ideal bookshelf. So they must have all got their heads together and decided on their ideal bookshelf and then made a mug out of it. So this has Great Expectations, which is my favorite book of all time. So love that. It's got Gulliver's Travels, Sense and Sensibility, Les Mis, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Wind in the Willows, War and Peace, Pride and Prejudice, Wuthering Heights, Little Women, The Secret Garden, Jane Eyre, and the Odyssey. So I'm going to agree with that. That is an ideal bookshelf right there. It's too hot to drink. So we'll work on that while we're working through our book haul. Okay, so for March of 2021, I did some book shopping, of course, and I hit a couple shops that I'd never been to before. One was uh, all new books, and then one was a used bookstore. I just thought it was interesting um, how much I spent at one versus the other, and I'll get into that, but let's get into the books first. Alright. Receipt. Okay, so this bookstore, I spent, I spent $46. <clears throat> on books. So, ah, uh, what got on my books? I'll have to clean this. Okay. Um, so I got a copy of The Island of Dr. Moreau. Don't know what I got on here. This is by H.G. Wells, and this is a Bantam Classic edition, and I just love the cover. It's so, um, kind of eerie, isn't it? I don't know if you can see that. But um, I loved this. Uh, I love H.G. Wells, so I wanted, I haven't read this yet, and it looked like such a short little book, so I wanted to give this a try. Even though I have like a giant edition with all the books, but it's nice to have the little standalones too, so you don't have to carry this huge heavy book around when you're reading. So, so I got this one, and then I also got The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, and this is the Penguin Classics edition. So, and I don't know if you can see, but when it shifts in the light, um, it says, stay gold, pony boy, which I think is a very famous line from the book. <clears throat> you know, I feel like I read this a long time ago, but I don't remember, so I'm not going to say that I did, um, but I definitely want to read it again because I don't have um, memories of it, or strong memories of it anyway. So I really want to get to this this year. You know, again, it looks like a very short read, but I know this is a very important book, and so I definitely want to read this one. And I love this edition. I loved that. So um, grabbed that at the new bookstore. <clears throat> and then I also got The Plague by Albert Camus. Camus? Albert Camus? Camus? Albert Camus. <clears throat> got it by him. And, um... So I, I don't know too much about this other than I think, um, you know, there's a plague. <laughs> that was a great description. Let me read the back. A gripping tale of unrelieved horror, a survive, of survival and resilience, and of the ways in which humankind confronts death. 
The Plague is at once a masterfully crafted novel, eloquently understated and epic in scope, and a parable of ageless moral resonance profoundly relevant to our times, especially in a pandemic. In Oran, a coastal town in North Africa, the plague begins as a series of portents, unheeded by the people. It gradually becomes an omnipresent reality, obliterating all traces of the past and driving its victims to almost unearthly extremes of suffering, madness, and compassion. So this sounds intense, and I really want to read this. Um, and I love this cover. I think that's so graphic and cool. So I really want to get to this sometime. And then I picked up, oh wait, does it say what edition this is? Just says vintage, vintage international. Yeah, cool. And then I also got um, Winesburg, Ohio by Sherwood Anderson. So I don't live too far from, or a, a drivable distance to um, his home and museum. So I'd like to go there sometime, maybe sometime this summer. So I wanted to read this book ahead of time so that I would know a little bit more, but I think this is kind of autobiographical. Um, let me see. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. <clears throat> Evoking with lyrical simplicity quiet moments of epiphany in the lives of ordinary men and women, in a bed elevated so that he can peer out the window, an old writer contemplates the fluttering of his heart and considers, as if view viewing a pageant, the inhabitants of a small Midwestern town the stories are about loneliness and alienation, passion and virginity, wealth and poverty, thrift and pro profligacy. Profligacy? I'm going to have to look that up. It is so vivid, so full of insight, so shiningly lifelike and glowing, wrote H.L. Mencken. The book is lifted into a category all of its own. So <clears throat> this won the National Book Award, the O. Henry Prize, the American Book Award, the National Book Critics Circle Award, and two Pulitzer Prizes. So I really want to get to this sometime. And like I said, go and visit his home and museum, which I think is near like Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. Okay, so these are the four books that I purchased at a new bookstore. I guess I could hold them this way. Aren't they lovely? They're lovely books. They're beautiful. So I spent $46 on these four books. Okay, let's see if this is cool enough to drink out. Oh, feels so good. Mm. Yum. Um, the tree, tea I'm drinking is by Puka, P-U-K-K-A, and it's elderberry and echinacea, and it's so good. Oh, my gosh. And with a touch of honey, mm, 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 mm. Okay, so those were the new books. And then I hit up a used bookstore that I had never been to before. Oops. And it was wonderful. And I bought, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I bought six books and spent $20. So six books for 20 and four for 46. So at first, you know, after I did this shopping adventure, I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a difference. And then I was like, you know what though? I want to support all places that sell books. So I was like, it kind of evens out though. If I spend, you know, 20 bucks on six books and then <clears throat> 40 bucks on, 46 bucks on four books. So I've got 10 bucks for, <laughs> I can't do math when I've got a cold. <clears throat> I got 10 bucks for $66. So like, that's like $6.60 each. Totally worth it. So I'm like, I'm not gonna judge myself harshly for spending, you know, that much. Cause at first I was pretty hard on myself. I was like, I can't believe you just spent that much money on books, on four books. But then like I said, it kind of all balances out. So I feel, I feel good about myself now, thank you. So anyway, so at the used bookstore, I got this edition of George Orwell's Animal Farm. I have never read this book before. Um, this is a Signet Classics edition, which is really cool. I kind of like the simplicity of the cover. Um, I haven't read this book. I know it's supposed to be like a parallel to politics and political life or a statement on politics, which that synopsis does not <laughs> inspire me. I do not love politics. I don't like reading about politics. 
Um, but, you know, a lot of people seem to think that this is really cool. So I'm going to give it a chance. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I also got a copy of J.D. Salinger's um, Nine Stories. So um, I really want to read this one. I have not read any of this. I don't know much about it. Yeah, I think it's a collection of nine short stories by J.D. Salinger. So if you guys have read any of these and you have a favorite one, please let me know. And um, so I, I know if I need to get to this quickly. And then I got a copy of Nathaniel Hawthorne's The House of the Seven Gables, and this just sounded cool. So this is the Signet Classics edition also, and um, it said, what did it say? It sounds like it's a haunted house story. Yeah, God will give him blood to drink. This is a tale of an evil house cursed through the centuries by a man who was hanged for witchcraft, haunted by the ghost of its sinful dead, racked by the fear of its frightening living. The blighted house controls the fates of four pensions. Hepzibah, an elderly recluse. Clifford, her feeble-minded brother. Phoebe, their young country cousin. And Jaffrey, a devil incarnate whose greedy quest for secret wealth is marked by murder and terrible vengeance from a restless grave. So that sounds amazing. So I picked that up. I want to get to that. That might be like a fall, uh, a fall read. That sounds creepy. And then I picked up two Steinbecks, The Red Pony and The Pearl. Both of these are Penguin Classics editions. And, um, you know, I have, what else do I have? I have Of Mice and Men in this edition. So I thought these would look really pretty together on my shelf. And then also, you know, they're just quick reads. And I always love to have short stories to read, especially after you read a huge tome. It's nice to be able to pick up a short story so that, you know, after you've spent a lot of time in one book, it's like, okay, I need to get through one that's that's not taking up so much of my brain space. So I like to have these along. You know, I don't know anything about these. I will find out when I read them. But John Steinbeck's an American classic, so you gotta have it. So this one was kind of in um, battered condition. Um, I think it was only a couple bucks. I tore off all the um, uh, stickers when I got these, but this is the Phantom Tollbooth. Again, I don't know much about this, but I've heard of it. I know it's a children's classic. Um, I think the author just passed away recently, which is so sad and heartbreaking. Um, and I think out of print, just started making some um, Phantom Toll, Toll Booth uh, merch, some t-shirts and sweatshirts and things. So I really want to read this. Um, you know, I just love, I love children's classics, but, and this has like little um, illustrations in it, so it's really cute. But yeah, I don't know anything about this. For Milo, everything's a bore. When a toll house mysteriously appears in his room, he drives through only because he's got nothing better to do. But on the other side, things seem different. Milo visits the Island of Conclusions. You get there by jumping. <laughs> That's so cute. Learns about time from a ticking watchdog named Talk, and even embarks on a quest to rescue Rhyme and Reason. Somewhere along, the, uh, somewhere along the way, Milo realizes something astonishing. Life is far from dull. In fact, it's exciting beyond his wildest dreams. That sounds so cute. <laughs> I can't believe it took me that long to make that pun, that joke. That was so cute. Okay, so I also got this copy, um, and I can't wait to read it. And, you know, again, even though it looks thick, this will probably be a quick read. It's, a, you know, middle grade, so um, simple... Simple sentences, you know, somewhat large print, you know, it probably won't take too long to get through this, so I'm excited. <sighs> Ugh, man. If you could just hold the feeling of the warmth going down your throat right where it hurts and just leave it there, that would just be amazing. Ugh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So another book that I got in the month of March was from my Coffee and a Classic subscription box. And I got this copy of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And it's stunning. It's beautiful. This is the Paper Mill Press edition. And it feels like almost like a suede. And it's got this metallic foiling design on the cover. And it's just absolutely beautiful. 
Um, so I love that. Oh my gosh. It also, um, my subscription box also came with this gorgeous um, bookmark, which is, I think it's hand drawn or hand painted on a thin piece of wood, which is just absolutely amazing. But it's got the quote from Wuthering Heights saying, whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. And I just love that. So that's gorgeous. So I'm going to leave that in this copy. But yeah, so um, after I got this, I had never seen these editions, these paper mill press editions. And so naturally I got online, which is dangerous, and looked and I found a few others that I think I'm going to order for April. So those will probably be in my April haul. Darn you, Coffee and a Classic, making me order more books. <laughs> but these, this edition was so lovely, I just wanted some others to place with it. Um, so I'm going to get those. So that was this book also. And then my mama found this book. I think she found it either in her own collection or at a used bookstore. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask her. But this is Rain Tree County by Ross Lockridge Jr. So if you don't know about Rain Tree County, it is, oh, wait, let me show you this. It's got a map in the front. I don't know about you guys, but I love it when books have maps in them. I just think that's so stunning. So um, this supposedly, you know, is supposed to take place in Indiana. Um, and I think the author based it off of Henry County, Indiana. And I grew up over in Indiana. So, um, you know, that I just, you know, you know, you always find a connection when you see that stuff. And it just makes you happy to think that, you know, there's, there's a beautiful story that takes place in your neck of the woods. So I also watched this film when I was a youngster. I mean, youngster. I was like a teenager because um, it's some heavy material. But I remember seeing the film and I loved it. It's got Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Clift. And I have a movie poster um, from that film that my dad gave me for a gift once. And I have it framed. I'm going to do like a, I'll do a, a tour of my um, classic movie posters sometime and so you'll get to see it there when I post that but yeah so anyway so I love Rain Tree County I feel like it's not really talked about but it's a pretty I mean this is a lengthy book but um, as far as the movie goes because I haven't read the story yet which I would like to obviously but from the um, from what I've gotten from the movie and again I, it's been years since I've seen it I need to I need to find a copy and um, buy it and watch it again but um, it's about this um, young southern man. I think he comes back from the Civil War and marries his sweetheart, and which is Elizabeth Taylor, and um, finds out that she kind of is um, going mad. She There's a history of madness in her family, and, um, you know, I think the girl he left behind still loves him, and there's this um, legend of a, of a rain tree, um, which is supposed to make your wishes come true or something like that. And so there's this legend and myth around it and everybody's in search of this um, magical tree. And um, so it's just, it's, it's a very cool concept. I'm not doing it justice. Oh, look at this. Look at those illustrations. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Wow. I'm going to have to be very careful when I read this, but I'm excited too. It sounds really cool. <sighs> okay, so I hope you all enjoyed my March 2021 book haul, and thank you for sticking with me through this. I'm sorry that my voice sounds weird, um, but yeah, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's funny how just a cold can wear you out. Um, I hate to be a baby, but dang, I'm going to be a baby. So I'm going to go and drink my tea and read the, my current book and wait for this cold to go away. <laughs> so thank you for hanging out with me, and I hope I see you again soon. Take care. Remember, always be kind to yourself as well as others, and always be kind to cats. Love you guys. Bye. thought it was interesting, like, how much...